Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two characters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right or wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode to see the next fighters so you can make your predictions in the comments below. And who knows, your comments or video responses could be in the next episode. Now, let's meet our two fighters. Dr. Eggman, eternal nemesis of Sonic the Hedgehog. And Dr. Cortex, the evil mad scientist of Wumpa Islands. Now remember, we are only using Eggman and Cortex and the things that they can do on their own. No minions or outside help. Otherwise, it would be quite unfair to Eggman as Cortex has Entropy on his side who has Battlefield Removal, Reality Warping, and Time Paradox Manipulation abilities. He could literally change the outcome to whatever he wants. So, we're keeping it fair and on even ground with Eggman vs. Cortex. Which one of these two villainous scientists will win? This is Universes. Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Or Eggman. Or Baldy Nose Hair, whatever you want to call him. Standing 6 feet tall and weighing in at 282 pounds with a BMI of 37.2, he's literally a severely obese mass of pure evil. But it's not just Eggman's weight that's reaching high numbers. This mad scientist also has an IQ of 300. That's almost twice of Albert Einstein's. And it's over twice of the normal human average. Yeah, the obese mad scientist who chases talking animals is twice as smart as you. How does that make you feel? Anyways, Dr. Eggman seeks world domination like any other supervillain, and he does so by enslaving innocent little creatures and putting them into robots. That way he can use them to slow down Sonic while he works on his plans. His plans to build an amusement park! You know, honestly, his schemes wouldn't be that evil if he didn't have to enslave little animals to accomplish his goals. But when Sonic boosts through all his minions, Eggman must take matters into his own hands. We all know Eggman is a genius who creates mini-machines, but we can all agree that his best invention is the Eggmobile, a small dome-shaped hovercraft jam-packed with weapons. It has a gigantic wrecking ball, it can shoot lava, it can grow a spike to skewer objects, and it can even drop spike bombs. The Eggmobile is also quite convenient as it can fit inside other machines. He can control a car with the drill, a giant flying drill that shoots missiles, and even a gigantic mech that he can use to squash his foes or shoot with its spiky arms. He also has extremely mobile robots that can fight while flying so that way he can take on Sonic and his friends while they're on the run. Heck, Eggman has done some hero work on the side in a mech that can lock onto multiple targets and shoot small little lasers. Most of these machines are created by Eggman himself, but they're also a gigantic weakness. Eggman is 100% reliant on them for combat, and he has no capable fighting skills on his own. The most he has on foot is punching a wall of ice. While it is still considered superhuman, it's not very impressive compared to other fictional characters. Also, despite his weight and size, he can move pretty fast. So, his weight doesn't seem to be causing any health problems. But, that's about all he can do by himself. Thanks to his mechs and machines, Eggman has made it through high security areas, and his robots can even build a gigantic amusement park in outer space. Sadly, while this evil genius may not be able to defeat Sonic, he can still survive the explosions and breakdowns of his own machines. He's survived exploding into fireworks and being completely buried underground after falling off the Lost Hex due to a failing jetpack. Sure, he's a bit clumsy, sure he gets overshadowed by other villains, but no one can match up to this iconic doctor. Nobody can match up to the evil genius, Dr. Baldy Nose Hair. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You know what I mean, Dr. Eggman. Now, let's see if his opponent Cortex can get a higher grade in evil science class. Boss, your hands! As long as I can still strangle a Zeti, my hands are fine. 
He was looking kinda whack with his tattoo colored black in the shape of an N on his forehead. Dr. Neocortex, and no, the N doesn't stand for Neo, it stands for nerd. Anyways, like most evil scientists, Dr. Eggman included, Cortex had plans for world domination, one even involving innocent animals just like Eggman. But unlike Eggman, instead of putting the animals into robots, Cortex wanted to mutate them to superhuman levels to lead in an unstoppable army. Several failures of this experiment occurred, and one special failure led to the creation of his nemesis, Crash Bandicoot. Since then, Cortex's many plans have been constantly thwarted by this orange furry creature. So much that even when his mutation experiments became successful, he had to use them specifically for defeating Crash. And even they failed, causing Cortex to realize that if he wanted something done right, he'd have to do it himself. Instead of using machines, Cortex carries some special equipment with him. For movement, he has a hoverboard that can fly at speeds of a rocket-powered jetpack. And if he doesn't have the hoverboard with him at the time, he also has a pair of rocket boots. As for weapons, Cortex uses a plasma ray gun. It can fire homing projectiles or even rapid-fire little beams. He can charge it up for an even stronger attack, but these can be reflected. It even has different settings. It has a magnet setting for moving metal objects a love setting, a fire setting, a death setting, and even a stun setting that can paralyze victims for hours at a time. Cortex can also throw bombs or plant a bunch of landmines by pulling them out of who knows where and tossing them on the ground. He can create circular barriers around himself that no solid objects can pass through, and Cortex himself even has some very odd teleportation abilities. It's not instant like Goku's teleportation, but it turns Cortex completely intangible and allows him to travel anywhere at rapid speeds to get out of danger. This is very good for saving him from long falls. And if all of his weapons and gadgets fail him, Cortex has one last trick up his sleeves. He has a mutation formula that can transform him into a gigantic beast capable of taking down space stations with his punches. This form also has powerful tornado spin abilities, and it can create projectiles. But even without this mutation, Cortex is still capable in combat. He can defeat foes who attack with lightning, and he's on par with Crash who can also take down other gigantic mutants. And when Cortex had to play hero, he contributed to the defeat of the evil twins by dodging lasers, bullets, and shooting off parts of their gigantic robot that they were going to use to destroy all of Wumpa Island. He survived falling all the way from a blimp and hitting the ground so hard that he went through and landed in a mine. And he even managed to survive getting sucked into a black hole, stretched through time, and converted to a baby. Yeah, the Crash Bandicoot games can get pretty crazy. But now it's time to see which evil doctor, scientist, person thing will win in a battle to the death. Let's look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Defeated again? This is not fair! Maybe I should retire to a nice big beach with a nice big drink and a woman with nice big bags of ice for my head. Hey guys, ZDog S here, here to bring you a universe's prediction for Leopold the Brave. Universes, if you don't know, is the series that replaced fictional fights for Leopold Report the Brave. I recommend you go watch it. And if this video persuades you to watch it, good, good. Um, but their next battle will be Dr. Evo Egrin Eggman Robotnik from Sonic the Hedgehog versus Dr. Neo Cortex from Crash Bandicoot. And this is a prediction video for him. I think that Dr. Cortex will win. Why do I say this? Well, I think that he is, um, he has a little more experience than, um, Eggman, because he can actually make creatures and has been, um, doing technological things all his life. Um, I don't know if, like, their, um, technology will be in because of the, um, no henchmen, just the doctors, but if you do, I think Eggman's will barely counter his. Um, I don't. I, I don't really know what he would use. Like maybe the Mecha Band kill from Twin Sanity. I don't know, but I think Eggman has a slight advantage there. Cortex has a bigger durability from being able to survive a cliffside sl um, sliding thing. Um, I don't know. It's it's the level from Crash Twin Sanity where Cort or uh, Crash Wide Cortex, but like he survived that. How? I don't know. Oh well. Um, um, Eggman may have a uh, edge speed because he can run faster than Sonic. How? I don't know. Don't ask. Um, but yeah. And I think he's more dur um, Cortex is more durable since he survived a fall from Earth and survived as well. 
Um, so yeah, I think that Dr. Cortex will win the next episode of Universes. Um, Leopold the Brave, if you see this, hey, what's up? And, uh, see you guys later. All right, the results have been calculated, and the winner is... Dr. Neo Cortex. Now, before we get to the actual results, let's go over a reason so many people predicted Eggman. It was because they tried scaling his machines to Sonic. Sure, Eggman fights Sonic in his machines, but that's no reason for them to be scaled. Eggman's robots fly behind and in front of Sonic with ease, which means that if Sonic's running at top speed, it means Eggman's faster than Sonic, which we know is not true. So there's no actual way to tell the speed of Eggman and his devices. Eggman isn't catching up to fight Sonic. Sonic is slowing down to fight Eggman. Not to mention that these machines that Sonic Sonic outpaces and destroys are the same machines that characters like Tails, Amy, Cream the Rabbit, and even Big the Cat can outpace and destroy. Sonic curb stomps Eggman and his machines. You can't scale to someone who curb stomps you. The impressive feats Sonic gets aren't even from Eggman. They're from the enemies that overshadow Eggman. But enough about Sonic versus Eggman. Let's see how Cortex wins. Well, for starters, there's Eggman's reliance on his machines. While these fancy mechs are cool and all, it's not like he can control all of them at once. And Cortex has already shown the capabilities of destroying them, with him dealing heavy damage to the evil twin's island-destroying robot and punching down a space station in his titan form. Sure, Eggman's machines would last quite a while with how many shots it would take Cortex to destroy them, but Cortex has plenty of ways to stay safe as well. The barriers he can create, his hoverboard, his rocket boots, and even the temporarily invincibility he can gain from that odd teleportation move. If Cortex didn't have his barrier, hoverboard or titan form he'd still be good for a fight meanwhile if eggman doesn't have his machines he's extremely vulnerable he'd have no way to escape being paralyzed and vaporized by cortex now one thing we can assume about the speed of eggman's machines is that he's at least keeping up with the casual sonic which constantly breaks the sound barrier but cortex faces foes who attack with lasers bullets and even dodged lightning at point blank range so in the speed department whoever has the edge may switch a lot but it'll never be a big enough of a difference for the outcome to rely on it and again there's the arsenal advantage Eggman may have a lot of machines, but they're all manually controlled, so he can't use all of them at once. Meanwhile, all of Cortex's gadgets and arsenal are with him at all times for him to use whenever he pleases. And last but not least is durability. While their durability may seem similar with both surviving long falls and explosions, Cortex edges out a lot with his ability to survive being sucked into a black hole, and that's not even taking his titan form into account. Eggman may have the fancier machines, but Cortex's easy access to his gadgets and the capabilities to do away with his machines, along with significantly superior Superior physical stats gives him the win. The winner is Cortex. I promise, from now on, I'll be more evil, more villainous, more horrible, horrible! Oh, and go kill bandicoots too. I'm still going to spank you stupid for this. Get ready for the next battle. It's time for a Disney duel!